welcome to church. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Please help me celebrate and appreciate God in the life of the choristers. That was another wonderful time of praise and of worship. And if you don't mind, can we wave our hands to the virtual church and say we welcome you brothers and sisters. We know you are there and we welcome you. Hallelujah. Well, this is day one of the three days of power conference. Today, Tuesday the 28th and Thursday the last day in the month of November the 38th. It will be three days unforgettable in the mighty name of Jesus. We're looking at the on-time God these three days within our theme, Jehovah Jireh. On-time God. The Lord will come right on time for you. He will come right on time for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Genesis 22, 9 to 14. Genesis 22, 9 to 14 from the New King James Version. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his arms. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord he shall be provided. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by telling you that God sets time and seasons for everything under heaven. He has the prerogative. He doesn't live in time because it's the beginning, it's the ending. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. God sets time and seasons for everything under heaven. No one can successfully fight the set time of anyone. They can try, but when the set time of a man comes, nobody can stop it. When it was time for Israel to leave slavery in Egypt, the stubbornness of Pharaoh couldn't stop it. You can read Exodus chapter 12. He tried, but as stubborn as he was, he could not stop the escape, the deliverance of the people of God from Egypt. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. No one will be able to stop you from going free in the name of Jesus. When it was time for Joseph, Joseph's dream of greatness to be fulfilled, the forgotten was remembered because the butler suddenly remembered Joseph. But it was not a subject of memory, but a matter of set time. Genesis 41, 9 to 14. When it was time for revival in Nineveh, the disobedient prophet Jonah had to be swallowed up by the fish. Because Jonah could not stop the revival. And God had chosen him to be the one he will use for the revival. And Jonah said, I will not go. No, I won't allow Nineveh to, to enjoy revival. God said, we shall see. God sent a fish to swallow Jonah. And when the fish vomited him, he was right in Nineveh. Any blessing of yours that is being delayed or hindered by anyone, God will use any method, but the blessing will become yours. Can I hear your amen? Let your amen be a louder amen. God sets time for the manifestation in every life and situation. And it's never late. Even if it appears to be late in coming, God is never late. Abraham went through a lot, but he secured an unending blessing lasting from generation to generation. When God wants to make a giant hog, it takes a hundred years. But when he wants to make a mushroom, he does it overnight. Somebody's blessing is not a mushroom blessing. That's why it appears he has taken some time. But hear me, God is coming real big. He's coming real big. 
It's coming real big. It's coming real big. And it's your time. And now it is in the name of Jesus Christ. I must, however, let you know that the insensitivity to time and season has robbed many of blessings. People of God, our insensitivity most of the time has robbed us of blessings. There are four types of mindset that kills sensitivity in the spirit and has robbed many of blessings. There is only one mindset that we must have, particularly now, because I am sure that the on time God is ready for somebody in the name of Jesus. So the four mindset that we must uproot today, I will go over it very quickly and I will zero in on the mindset that brings to us the blessings of God. The first mindset that we must do away with is called the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset. The fixed mindset almost robbed Naaman of his healing at God's appointed time. The on time God had determined to heal Naaman of his leprosy. And God made the arrangement in such a way that Naaman found himself in the front of the man of God, Elisha. And Elisha did not come out to see him. He just sent a word to him. Go and wash seven times in Jordan and your leprosy will go. And this man, Naaman, became angry. 2 Kings 5, 11 and 12. 2 Kings 5, 11 and 12. But Naaman became angry and stalked away. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord his God and heal me. And there are rivers of Damascus, the Abana and the Fapa better than any of the rivers of Israel. Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. Naaman was expecting that the man of God would just wave the hands and speak a word and leprosy will go. And even if he will have to wash in any river, there was no way we would have been Jordan fixed mindset. There are too many people that have been fixed in their mindset. Our brain is too small to comprehend or to teach God how he wants to do what he wants to do. We must allow God, because he's the almighty God, to do our blessings and bring it the way he so determines. Listen, you can be in abundance and still go hungry with a fixed mindset. The day that I, I left home, I was fasting. And in the evening, I was still out about six and I was really hungry and I wanted to eat. So I stopped by in the restaurant. In my fixed mindset, my wallet will always be in my Bible bag. So I ordered the food and I was going to pay and I opened my Bible bag. My wallet wasn't there. Oh my God. So the waiter looked at me like, are you serious? I said, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I know you served the food already, but my wallet... I must have left it at home. It's not where it should be. And she looked at me, not happy. I said, I'm sorry. And I left. And I got home. I was wearing a jacket like this. One of the reasons I stopped wearing it. <laughs> Glory be to God. And I was going to pull my jacket, and my wallet was right there in my breast pocket. But I was fixed in my mindset that my wallet must be in the Bible bag. But on that day, it wasn't there. Oh, I had it all along. I had debit card, I had credit card, I had cash with me. I still went hungry. When your mindset is fixed, you are likely to want to teach God how to do it. And many times we have missed our blessings. So that's one mindset we must get rid of. Can I hear your amen? amen. You can have an open door and not walk through it if your mindset is fixed. Again, I was coming from our house where we used to live in Cinco Ranch. And between Cinco Ranch and here, there are about, you know, on Pin Oak in particular, there are about four or five lights. that you must, And they're very close, about 30 seconds one to another. So I got to the first one, it was red. What did I do? Stopped. I got to the second one in 30 seconds, it was red. What did I do? Stopped. I got to the third one, it was red. What did I do? Stop. I got to the fourth one, it was red. What did I do? Stop. But I got to the fifth one, it was green. What did I do? Now, why, do, why will you stop on the green light? 
I stop because I've been fixed to stopping. Many have been used to failing. And now God says it's time to succeed. He said, no. They say, they are fixed. They say, mm -mm, no, I'm not used to passing. How can I pass? I've been failing. I've been failing. So I stopped on the green light. And the guy behind me had to honk. Get out of your car. Then I woke up. Don't get used to negativity. Every negativity that have tied you down, you escape this morning in the name of Jesus. Fix myself is a mindset that we must get away with. Embargo could be lifted, but a fixed mindset can, can, can replace the original embargo with another embargo. An experiment was carried out of a board, put in a transparent glass. They put a food before the bird, but there was a barricade of a transparent glass. Could see the food, but couldn't reach the food. So use the beak many times, many times, many times, and then it, the, the bird gave up. And now they removed the embargo and left the bird to eat, but the bird could not pick it. Because it kept saying an embargo. The embargo over your life is lifted this morning. And you will not see it ever again in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> that was what wasted the Israelites in the wilderness. They were used to failing. They were used to bondage. So each time on, in the wilderness, on their way to the promised land, remember they have now been delivered. But for every challenge they have, they say, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back. Eventually they were wasted. Only two. Of the original 600,000 men made it to the promised land. May fix my said not rob you anymore. Amen. Let your amen be a, a big amen. amen. The second one is what I call the sick mindset. Sick mindset. Sick mindset turns a divine visitation to a divine judgment. And that was the experience of Zechariah. In Proverbs 13, verse 12, Proverbs 13, verse 12, up deferred. Make it the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. You know, when you are waiting for something for a long time, your mind can become sick. When you are sick of waiting, you may be reluctant to claim your blessing when it arrives on a platter of gold. So this man, Zechariah, he was a righteous man with the wife Elizabeth. Luke 1, 18 to 20. Luke 1, 18 to 20. It was now... The appointed time and the untimed God showed up on their behalf and sent an angel, Gabriel, to him. Now, get ready, get ready, get ready. Your wife is going to bring forth a male child. What did he say? In verse 18, Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well long in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Sick mindset. Is your, are you sick on your mind? Because you have been waiting? Don't allow the sick mindset rob you. Waiting must not weigh you down. So he seek mindset. Number three, what I call hopeless mindset. Hopeless mindset can embrace defeat when victory is possible. In 1 Samuel 3, 18, 1 Samuel 3, 18, God had decided to bring judgment against the house of Eli. And God spoke to Samuel. And Samuel narrated everything to Eli. Listen to what Eli said. 1 Samuel 3, 18. So Samuel told him everything. Hiding nothing from him that Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. What? God said, He will destroy the house of Eli. They will not even remember that there's. I mean, it was heavy judgment. I thought Eli would prostrate and say, Lord, this thing must not happen to me. But no, his mindset is the hopeless mindset. What can I do? I've tried my best. Yes, if God wants to kill me, let him kill me. He wants to kill my children, kill them. What does it matter? There are people that have become hopeless. Brothers and sisters, Ezekiah refused.
to take a death sentence. It was God who sent Isaiah. Go and tell Ezekiah, put your house in order for you are going to die. Ezekiah did not argue with the prophet because he knew the prophet would be a good man of God. He said, man of God, thank you very much. You have done your job. No problem. He turned to God and said, God, I am not ready to die. Remember my great works. And God sent Isaiah, go back and tell him, I've had it 15 more years. There are no hopeless situations. There are only hopeless people. Don't let your situation condemn you to hopelessness. Can I hear your amen? amen? Number four, the traditional mindset. The traditional mindset has always robbed many of blessings on the day of visitation. There are traditions and conventions, but God is not bound by them. It is a tradition that a woman must know a man to be pregnant. It has never happened before. But the angel Gabriel stood before Mary. Say, hey, young lady, virgin, without knowing a man, you are going to have a child. The only thing the young girl said is, how shall this thing be? Since I know no man, said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Say, let it be unto you, unto me, according to your word. She did not follow tradition. Because tradition would have meant impossible. There are people, you are pregnant. God has promised you. Now you are, the pregnancy is there. And not because you are spotting. Say, you cried throughout the night, I lost the baby. I lost the baby. Now the spotting did not kill the baby. Your mouth killed the baby. Don't follow tradition when you are dealing with God. Tradition will fail. God will not fail. Can I hear amen? What therefore is the mindset that we must have? I call it the Lord's mindset. The Lord's mindset is the mindset that is sensitive to the workings of God. Philippians 2 verse 5. Philippians 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Abraham's mindset is tuned to the frequency of God. Understanding the time. Understanding the seasons and what God is saying per time. 1 Chronicles 12 32. 1 Chronicles 12 32. And of the children of Issachar which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were their commandment. We must be in tune with the mind of God. And he's saying to us, I want to prove myself today as the on-time God. Now, if you have the, the Lord's mind, then that will be your frequency. Regardless of how hopeless the situation may be. Abraham was sensitive to the voice of the Lord and followed every divine instruction as instructed. You are not likely to receive any more than your mindset is prepared for. That's why you have to change every negative mindset this morning. Can I hear your amen? amen. Although we serve the untimed God, he wants our mind to be set for the blessings. Blind Bartimaeus' mind was set to receive and no one could shout him down. The woman with the issue of blood could not be hindered by the tradition of the land. When you are having your period in those days, you, can't, you are not allowed to walk between the people. The lady set aside the tradition. So I don't care. When you are walking, you should be shouting, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. But she couldn't be bothered by tradition. Say, I must touch the hem of his garment. She did and made whole. This morning, somebody will touch the hem of his garment. I want you to rise now. <laughs> Abraham was a friend of God. Miracles are not for enemies, but for friends. If you are here, you are not born again yet. You are not a friend of God. The first level of friendship with God is to surrender your life to him. So if you are here, you are not born again or in the virtual church. All you need to do is to raise your hand up and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. But I know you died for my sins. I give my life to you. Forgive my sins. Save my soul. If you pray that prayer then you are saved. It's as simple as that. And then you can join us to pray the rest of the prayers. But after now, we want you to get in touch with us and send a text to us. Write your name down. See us and let us know that you have, not, you have just given your life to Christ. And then we can begin to help you grow in your newfound faith. But right now, we want to pray. We want to pray. We want to pray. Raise your right hand above your head. I want you to pray very aggressively and say, Father, Father 
arise in your mercy and release unto me all that you have packaged for me this year. Come on, pray. Talk to the Almighty God. All that you have packaged for me, let there be a release. Let there be a release by your mercy. I may not be perfect, but Lord, you are merciful. By your mercy, release unto me all that you have packaged for me this year. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Say, Father, let every hand that won't allow me to hand this year well, let those hands be broken in the name of Jesus. Father, let every hand that will not allow me to hand this year well be broken. Let it 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 be broken. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now say, Father, I decree and declare that I shall receive all my blessings for this year by your mighty power. Come on, pray. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And I decree and declare that I shall receive all my blessings for this year. All the blessings that you have earmarked for this year. <clears throat> no more delay because you are the on time, God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now, number four, say, Father, I receive power from you to end this year well. In the name of Jesus, can you pray? I receive the power. The power to end this year well. The power to end this year well, I receive now. 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 Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Just three more prayers. Say, Father, grant me the grace to end this year well. Grant me the grace to end this year well. Oh, yes, pray, 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 pray the prayer. God still answers prayers. God does nothing except to answer the prayer of his people. Cry unto him, let him hear you. Father, grant me the grace to end this year well. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Two more, two more. Say, Father, by your mighty hand, I break every barrier to end this year well. In the name of Jesus, every barrier, every barrier, I break it, I break it. I must end this year well. I break every barrier. Every barrier on my way, I break it, I break it, I break it, I break it, I break it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Finally, say, Father, let the mind of Christ replace every negative mindset in me and command a release of my blessings before year end. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to Him. Every negative mindset. Yes, let it be replaced by the mindset of Christ. And therefore command a release of the blessings that you have here marked for me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Raise your right hand above your head as I pray. My Father and my God, we join our faith together. And I pray that every one of us, we end this year well in the name of Jesus. Every negative mindset standing between us, our blessing, may they all be uprooted now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you are the on time God. Release our blessings right on time and that now in the name of Jesus. Every barrier, every embargo standing between us and our blessing, we remove in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because it is done. Glory be to your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. If you receive your own, go ahead and give the Lord a big, big hand of praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. May be seated.